Hey guys, welcome to video 32. Today we're going to talk about the emitter follower or common collector configuration. I debated whether to use the circuit we're going to look at today, uh, but I decided to go with it because it's used in just about every textbook out there and it's also used in just about every presentation on the internet uh, about the emitter follower as well. One of the things that uh, they almost never mention, though, is that it's a terrible circuit from a uh, practical standpoint, and today you're going to find out why. All right, but uh, let's get a couple of preliminary things out of the way first. Uh, the output resistance of an amplifier usually should be similar to the resistance of the load it's driving. Uh, there's a uh, thing called the maximum power transfer theorem. We haven't discussed it yet in this series, but it says that in order to transfer maximum power to a load, the output resistance of an amplifier should equal the resistance of the load it's driving. Now, all the common emitter amplifiers we've been looking at typically have an output resistance of 1,000 ohms or more, so they're best suited for driving relatively high resistance loads. If you want to drive a low resistance load, you need an amplifier with low output resistance, and that's what we get from the emitter follower. All right, so let's take a look at the typical emitter follower circuit that's used in all of the references. Okay, as we can see, the input drives the base, the output is taken from the emitter terminal, and notice that I've added a uh, source resistance here. I mean, that's the whole reason why we'd use an emitter follower to begin with, is to prevent this low impedance load from loading down this source. All right, the amplifier acts as a buffer between the input source and the load resistor. All right, now notice also I don't have a collector resistor in this circuit. We don't need one because we're not taking a signal from the collector terminal. All right, so over here is our DC equivalent circuit. Uh, pretty simple. We've seen this many times, so let's just go through the analysis. Uh, the Thevenin voltage is going to be half of the supply voltage because we've got equal value resistors. So we've got VTH is 5 volts. RTH is going to be R1 in parallel with R2. 10K in parallel with 10K is 5K ohms. ICQ it will be VTH minus VBE divided by RE plus RTH over beta. Beta is 100, so that's going to be 4.3 volts divided by 1,050 ohms and that gives us about 4.1 milliamps all right vceq is vcc minus ic times re so that'll be 10 minus 4.1 volts which is 5.9 volts vce cutoff 10 volts ic sat VCC over RE, so that will be 10 milliamps. And finally, little RE is 26 millivolts divided by ICQ is 4.1 milliamps. So we've got little RE of about 6.3 ohms. All right, so that was a pretty easy, straightforward analysis. We've done that many times in the past. Now let's go look at the AC equivalent circuit. This is going to be a little bit messier. All right, so here's our AC equivalent. We've shorted all the capacitors and our supply rail to ground, activated V in. And let's take a look at the input resistance first, okay? Now, RS is not part of the amplifier specifically, so it doesn't factor into the input resistance. All right, so looking into the amplifier, we see R prime B in parallel with beta times little re plus the ac external resistance r prime e so r in equals r prime b in parallel with beta times little re plus external r prime e all right that's the same equation that we got for the common emitter amplifiers that we've been looking at in the previous videos all right, now let's uh, determine the voltage gain. All right, first of all, we've got two things affecting the gain here. We've got a voltage divider formed between RS and the input resistance of the amplifier. All right, so that's going to form a uh, factor 
that's equal to Rn divided by Rn plus Rs. All right. And then we've got the actual gain of the emitter follower itself. And if we look at it, whatever voltage is dropped out here across R prime B also is dropped across the combination of little re and external R prime E. So this just forms a voltage divider. And what we end up with is R prime E divided by R prime E plus little re. So this would be the voltage gain for this circuit if we connect a source that has a uh, value of RS associated with it, which is typically what's going to exist in the real world. Your source is probably going to have some resistance. Now, uh, let's go ahead and look at the output resistance. That's going to be pretty messy for this circuit. It's what we see looking from the perspective of RL, and we're going to see RE in parallel with little re and the parallel combination of this base uh, resistance stuff. But since we're looking into the emitter and this is in the base, it appears divided by beta in value. So what this all boils down to is that the output resistance that this load thinks it's being driven by is RE in parallel with little re plus RS in parallel with R prime B divided by beta. All right, now that's pretty messy, and I know my writing is terrible, but I'm going to carry over nicer versions of these equations in a bit. But let's take a look at this amplifier uh, in the case where RS equals zero. That's the way it's usually presented in all the textbooks. So let's take a look at that and see what we've got. All right, and here we go. All right, here's where the resistor RS used to be, and now let's uh, determine our input resistance, okay? Again, since RS is not part of that calculation, the same equation that we got here is going to apply to this one. So Rn is R prime B in parallel with beta times little re plus R prime E, all right? The voltage gain is going to be just this second term that we derived over here, actually it's a second factor, and that is AV equals, uh, whoops, let's get rid of that thing, it's going to be R prime E divided by R prime E plus little re. All right, now typically R prime E is much larger than little re, so this is uh, going to have very little effect, and we can approximate the voltage gain as being 1. Okay, that's what's usually done in all the textbooks. All right, and finally, the output resistance equation is going to be simplified uh, dramatically, too, because now the uh, voltage source driving the amplifier provides a uh, path to ground through its internal resistance of 0. So everything in the base is 0 ohms, and we end up with R out equals... RE in parallel with little re. And again, little re is usually so small compared to big re that the output resistance is approximately just little re. And that's probably the reason why they like to use this version uh, in all of the textbooks. It gives these nice simple equations. But if you have significant source resistance, you have to resort to these more complicated equations. All right, now let me clear out my chicken scratch and bring over the nice equations for you. And uh, you'll have something worthy of doing a screen capture. All right, so get rid of this stuff and this. And let's come on over and I'll copy and paste these over for us. Okay, so copy and paste and here you go here is uh, a summary of everything we've just derived and uh, you can do a screen capture that'll make a good reference for you okay so let's come over here and calculate the ac parameters for this amplifier all right first of all r prime e is 1000 ohms in parallel with 50 ohms which is pretty close to 50 ohms all right, the uh, AC base resistance R prime B, as we can see, is 5,000 ohms. And let's find R in now, okay? R in is 
beta times little r e plus big R prime e. So 50 plus 6.3, 56.3 times 100 is 5,630 in parallel with 5,000. So let's see what we get here. 5,630 in parallel with 5,000. gives us an input resistance of about 2.6 K ohms. All right, so two, well, 0.6 K ohms. All right, now that's the whole idea why we use this amplifier. This source thinks it's driving 2,600 ohms instead of 50 ohms, okay? So the amplifier is acting as a buffer between the source and the load. All right, our voltage gain. Let's disregard this divider for a second and we'll just determine the actual gain of the transistor itself. Okay, so that's going to be R prime E, which is about 50 ohms, divided by uh, 50 ohms plus little r e, which is 6.3. So divided by 56.3 gives the transistor itself a gain of about 0.9. All right, so this term is about 0 0.9. It's less than 1. This term uh, would be uh, pretty close to 1. So I'm just going to disregard it for right now. And let's say our voltage gain is approximately 0 0.9. Okay, not too bad considering the highest it could possibly be is you know, 1. All right, and finally, the output resistance. So uh, that's a little bit messy, but let's see what we've got. RS is 100 ohms. R prime B is 5,000 ohms. 100 in parallel with 5,000 is roughly 100. So we've got 100 ohms divided by beta, which is 100. So this term here is 1 plus little re. So we've got a total here of 7.3 ohms in parallel with... 1,000 ohms, so that's going to be 7.3 ohms. All right, so our output resistance is low. It's, you know, less than 10 ohms. That's good. That makes this amplifier very uh, effective at driving this relatively low resistance load. All right, so let's go on and see why this amplifier is actually not very good, okay? So to do that, we're going to do the DC and AC load lines. All right. So here are my equations for IC sat and VCE cutoff for the AC load line. All right. They're the same ones we used before, except now we don't have an R prime C term. So, you know, we just simplified them a bit. All right. Let's see what we've got here. IC sat is equal to ICQ 4.1 milliamps plus VCEQ 5.9 volts divided by R prime E, which is 50 ohms. And let's see what we've got here. Uh, 5.9 divided by 50 is 118 milliamps. Okay, so this term is 118 milliamps, 4.1 mils plus 118. Let's just call that about 120 milliamps. All right, it's huge compared to everything else current-wise in this circuit, so that is going to be a problem. But let's go on down and find VCE cutoff. That's VCEQ 5.9 volts plus ICQ of 4.1 milliamps times 50 ohms. All right, so 5.9 volts plus, uh, let's see, point. 4.1 milliamps times 50 ohms is about point, let's just call it 0 0.2 volts. All right, there we see a problem already. Okay, and that is, remember this term of the VCE cutoff equation tells us one of our output signal swing limits. In this case, we're moving towards cutoff. We're going to be going this way to the right. That corresponds to the negative going output across the load. So we're going to clip at negative 0.2 volts. All right. So we hardly get any 
uh, dynamic range or compliance out of this amplifier. But let's go ahead and draw our DC load lines just to uh, illustrate how bad this circuit is. All right, so let's see, we've got uh, 10 volts for VCE cutoff, and we've got 120 milliamps roughly for the AC collector saturation current. All right, our VCE cutoff for the AC load line is about, what, 6.1 volts. So let's draw that AC load line extending from here to 6.1. Looks like it's about here. Okay, and our DC load line goes from 10 volts to, uh, what is it, 10 milliamps. All right, let's see what that one looks like on this scale. Ah, hang on a second. Let's try and do that neatly. From 10 volts to 10 milliamps would look something like this on our graph, okay? Wow, here's our Q point. And when the Q point moves this way on the AC load line, that's positive going output. When it moves this way, it's a negative going output. And, uh, oh boy we are really limited in our uh, compliance. So this points out the whole problem with the amplifier. The AC load line is just so steep that we don't get a very usable output voltage swing. All right, so how could we fix this problem? Well, uh, what we could do is decrease the value of RE to the same uh, level as RL, but that would increase our quiescent collector current to some astronomically high value, and we don't want to do that. All right, so you might think, well, to compensate for decreasing RE, let's decrease our Thevenin voltage over here so that we don't get so much current, but then we'll reduce our base voltage to such a small level that we can't apply a very big input voltage without uh, <laughs> reverse biasing the base emitter junction and sending the transistor into cutoff. So none of those approaches is going to work. Really, there, there's no hope for this circuit. It's just not a good design uh, for this amplifier. What we really need to do is use a completely different circuit topology, and that's the uh, push-pull or complementary symmetry circuit that I have shown here. We're going to talk about that in uh, another video pretty soon, but uh, we'll get to it in good time. So that's something to look forward to. And now you know the truth about this amplifier, and I will see you next time around.